Dr. Kaku, thank you so much for, for meeting with me today. I want to ask some questions about some of your background, how you became the physicist that you are today. Mm -hmm. When was it that you knew that you wanted to get into physics? When I was a child of eight, something happened which changed my entire life. Albert Einstein had just passed away. The Isaac Newton of our era had just died. And it was the front page of every newspaper in the world. They published a picture of his desk, and the caption said, unfinished manuscript from the greatest scientist of our era. And I thought to myself, well, why couldn't he finish it? I mean, it was a homework problem, right? Why didn't he just go home and finish this unfinished thing? Well, then I went to the library to find out what was this unfinished manuscript, and I found nothing. It took years to figure out that this was to be his crowning achievement. He wanted an equation, one inch long perhaps, that would allow him to summarize all physical laws and allow him to, quote, read the mind of God. He wanted to unify everything there is, gravity, which keeps us on the floor, electricity and magnetism, which energizes our computers, the nuclear force, which lights up the sky and the heavens, all of it in an equation one inch long, and he failed. So to me, this was greater than any murder mystery. This was greater than any adventure story. I had to know what was in that book and what would it take to finish that book. Well, that's what I do for a living. I work on the unified field theory. So you had a very interesting and complex science project mm -hmm. that you, won, you went on to win a national award. Tell me a little bit about what you did. When I was in high school, I said to myself, I want to work with antimatter. So I built a cloud chamber, a 600 gas magnetic field, and I actually photographed tracts of antimatter in my mom's garage. And then I wanted to produce a beam of my own antimatter. So I went to my mom one day and I said, Mom, can I have permission to build an atom smasher in the garage? Okay, now the, I think the best thing I ever asked my mom to build was a tree house. So that's cra That's amazing. Uh -huh. Mom, can I build an atom smasher? What, what she, how does she respond? Well, I said a 2.3 million electron volt Betatron accelerator <laughs> consuming six kilowatts of power with a 10,000 gas magnetic field. Uh huh. And she kind of stared at me. <laughs> and she said, sure, I mean, why not? And don't forget to take out the garbage. Yeah, right. okay, so yeah. I, I went out, took the garbage, and then I went to Westinghouse, and I got 400 pounds of scrap transformer steel. I went to Varian Associates. I got 22 miles of copper wire. And over Christmas, we created a 10,000 gauss magnetic field for my 2.3 million electron volt beta tron accelerator. Uh, we won it on the high school football field. I put the wire on the goalpost, uh -huh. suspended it, gave it to my mother. My mother ran to the 50-yard line, gave it to my father, he would ran to the goalpost, and we wound 22 miles of copper wire on the high school football field. Jeez. Well, it was finally finished. So I got the capacitor banks, the magnet, everything was ready. The wall socket produced six kilowatts of power. I plugged it in, I closed my eyes, plugged my ears, and I heard this tremendous crackling sound as six kilowatts of power surged through my transformer and then through the capacitor bank. And then I heard this pop, pop, pop sound. <laughs> All the lights went out, and I blew out every single circuit breaker in the house. <laughs> so my poor mom would come home at, from a hard day's work and say, I mean, where's, where's the fuse box? And then she'd say, why can't I have a son who plays basketball? Right. Maybe if I give him a baseball. And for God's sake, why can't he find a nice Japanese girlfriend? <laughs> I mean, why does he build these machines in the garage? Well, hey, I had to know. I had to produce my own beam of antimatter in the garage. Well, I went to the National Science Fair, and I actually was on television with Edward Teller, mm -hmm. and he knew exactly what I was doing. I didn't have to explain to him what antimatter was. I didn't have to explain to him uh, what an atom smash was. He knew exactly what I was doing, and he gave me a scholarship to Harvard. So that began my career, basically. Wow, wow that's amazing. Now, it's Obviously, it's very supportive parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I think the worst thing I ever did at my house was I, st I set the half of a wall on fire outside uh -huh. my house playing with matches. Uh -huh. But antimatter cannons and breaking the fuses, uh, that is a different level of, of geekiness. Mm -hmm. Now, in high school, I would imagine if you're building antimatter cannons, mm -hmm. that would kind of right. put you in a different class of, of student. Did you ever find yourself getting picked on by bullies and the football players and all that stuff? Uh, well, no, I just stayed out of their way. But I, I noticed something, you know, I'm, I have kids and I see the movies and stuff. And I noticed that the movies have this pyramid 
uh, this pyramid where you have the cheerleader and the football jock at the top and all the geeks at the bottom. Uh -huh. This pyramid that only lasts for a few years. That's right. And then it's over. Yes. It's over for the rest of your life. That yes. pyramid inverts. And we get to laugh at them. It's the yes. up, upside down. And so teenagers have this distorted view of reality. Yes. That the law of the jungle that existed for hundreds of thousands of years, um, that that is the way modern society is, is configured. Oh. And they don't realize that, hey, unless you get an education, you're pumping gas, you're flipping hamburgers. That's right. The pyramid flips upside down. And yet Hollywood brainwashes us into thinking that high school musicals and the pecking order of high school is the way reality is based. That's, you know, I, I remember I, growing up in, in junior high, I actually ate my lunches in the bathroom because mm -hmm. I got made fun of and picked on by everybody, so I would mm -hmm. hide in the bathroom. And I think about that every time uh -huh. I go to Burger King and I order food from mm -hmm. the people that, that picked on me. Uh -huh. right? I'm like, I kinda, like you said, it kind of inverts. It's a nice, and, nice feeling. Uh, I just stay away from the, the potential problems and yes. the bullies, but I tend to think that maybe the rumor got around that I was building a death ray in, the, <laughs> in the, my mom's garage. So they stayed away from me. That's awesome. <laughs>